Hello friends, in this particular video, we are going to talk about phase diagrams. But before we dive into the topic of phase diagrams or explaining um, about phase diagrams or giving a definition about phase diagram, first of all, we should be in a position to answer the very preliminary question, which is, what is the requirement of a phase diagram? So, as a first cut answer as a first cut answer i would say as a designer we need to design as well as predict well in advance a particular heat treatment and its resulting microstructure clear because mostly in design we require materials with certain me mechanic Kill properties so we have to design a heat treatment accordingly so understanding the concept of phase diagrams will act as a precursor towards this big goal so this is why we learn phase diagrams first of all you can argue with me that phase diagrams will only have equilibri equilibrium states which is not the case in real life but in, a, in the sequence or in a while, I will explain you how these equilibrium microstructures or understanding of equilibrium microstructure will help us or will lead us to understanding or to getting a better insight into those continuous cooling diagrams or um, non-equilibrium states which is of more relevance in day-to-day -day life okay so a lot of introduction now without any further introduction let's go into the topic now first of all what is phase you can hold this video for a while and you can come up with an answer of your own phase it, it is defined as a homogeneous portion of a system which is or which has uniform physical as well as chemical characteristics so in the definition there are few things there are few words which we should pay attention one is it has physical characteristics It has uniform I mean it has uniform physical characteristics as well as chemical characteristics so it is the homogeneous portion of a system which has not just uniform physical characteristics but also uniform chemical characteristics having said what is a phase now let's look at two examples of two phase systems two very day-to-day -day life examples real life examples we can call so in the first example you can see sand and water okay or uh, to make this example more tractable or more easy to understand let me make it sugar in water okay so let's say i have put some extra sugar so the amount of sugar has exceeded the solubility limit of water at this particular temperature so some sugar is precipitated in the solution so here it is evident that we have got two phases first phase is the solution sugar and water solution and the second phase is sugar alone. I recommend you to go back to the definition of phase. So here, sugar has different chemical characteristics when you compare it with the solution, the sugar in water solution or the sugar solution. Similarly, the sugar solution has different physical characteristics 
compared to the sugar alone so that's why we call it a two phase system so the first phase is sugar alone the second phase is sugar in water solution they are distinct in their chemical makeup as well as in their physical makeup now let's move to the second example in the second example we have got ice in water in this particular scenario the chemical makeup of both these things are same they are h2o ice is h2o water is h2o but still this particular example is a two phase system why because the physical makeup or the physical characteristics of ice and water are different that's why this can be also referred to as a two phase system so we have seen two examples from real life now you can naturally ask me this question now can you give me an example where there would be two phases in metals or in alloys so we are taking an example of lead in a copper alloy here the parent metal is cop copper and we are adding lead actually uh, lead is added in steels to improve machinability so leave that as that in this particular example let's say initially we are doing a thought experiment in which initially we are adding a certain amount of lead into the alloy let's say that amount is very small then what happens is the amount of lead that we are adding into the system is less compared to the solubility limit of copper or the solubility limit of lead in copper then a complete solid solution will form it will be a single phase thing because a solid solution no different phases now in the thought experiment we are increasing the amount of lead if we do this this will exceed the solubility limit of lead in copper then what happens we will result in a microstructure which is something like this see this is a single phase microstructure but here once you exceed the solubility limit we will end up with this kind of a microstructure which consist of two phases the first phase is a small amount of lead this portion which is a small amount of lead which contains small amount of lead in solid solution in copper the second phase is these lead particles which i have shown in a bit in dark color which is rough which are roughly spherical in shape they are dispersed throughout the it's not steel actually it should be sorry i made a mistake apologies it should be in the structure throughout the microstructure it is not steel we are not talking about steel so this is one example in alloys where we can see two phase systems so i hope i conveyed the concept of phase and i gave you real life examples with which you can appreciate uh, the the explanations that i will be bringing in bringing in in the next few videos so in the next lecture we will look into a simple phase diagram before going to iron iron carbide phase diagram